Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. Strategies for local SEO. It's important to know how it works, how to implement local SEO because it's not the same with uh, SEO that we know. It's quite different. It's better to know local audience. And I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Kevin Marshall. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to learn more about that because I have local uh, SEO clients who need more traffic. And I found it's not only about traffic, it's more about sales, how many sales we can provide, how we can help with that. Because uh, uh, once I spoke with a master who lost uh, for uh, uh, 400,000 traffic, a lot, you know, uh, but after losing all this traffic, huge traffic, uh, he didn't lose any sales, so he got this traffic yeah. that didn't convert, and uh, it's important today to unite your strategy with sales. Uh, Kevin, before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you pay uh, attention to local SEO. Yeah, so... Um... Uh, I got into digital marketing SEO back in 2008. Um, you know, thanks for a lot different back then. Um, I had just uh, gotten out of a Yellow Pages sales job and uh, literally started Googling, how do you make money on the internet? And uh, so I started uh, researching SEO as um, I'll say the free way to get traffic. And I put that in quotes because at the end of the day, it does take a lot of resources. So it's not really free, but um, you know, I would say definitely SEO is a very effective way to get seen on Google um, and not have to worry about so much uh, spending, you know, spending thousands of dollars necessarily in Google ads. Um, I mean, there's, at the end of the day, SEO is a, a marketing channel, just like email, AdWords, uh, paid social media, all those channels. Um, and, you know, when you can get seen online and start getting passive uh, leads from your website, um, hey, that's a great way to uh, find more customers. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's talk about local SEO. You mentioned that SEO is another channel. And I see when people uh, think that SEO is uh, the channel, only channel that we have, but uh, it's not like this. Uh, many companies can live without SEO. They get great results because to pay attention, to something that works for them that's great uh, and i'm interested about the difference between local seo and common seo because i i still see when people implement common strategies what kind of difference we have yeah so i think one of the biggest differences with local seo versus like common seo national seo is uh, there's just not as much competition because you know you're competing with um you know depending on the industry if it's very niche in a local market it might be competing with 10 or 20 other businesses. Um, whereas uh, if you're doing um, SEO for e-commerce site or uh, your customer base is all over the United States or all over the world, you could have literally thousands of uh, competitors. Uh, so optimizing uh, for a local uh, business is a lot different. And I'd probably say one of the biggest differences is working with uh, the Google um, business profile and Google Maps uh, because um, a lot of times, if you can get listed in the Google Maps section and you can get listed, um, you know, I could, I've seen companies where they're getting like 30, 40 percent of their leads just from that local listing on Google Maps. And that's hardly not. Re I feel like it's not something that's really discussed enough in the local SEO space, but it's critically important for local businesses to be found there. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Okay, let's talk about, you know, for example, if I use local uh, keywords, I can see in the top 10 Zillow, Yelp, uh, Booking, many other websites uh, that have multi-regional uh, approach, you know, many pages for different regions. So can you tell how to compete with them? Uh, this Websites have authority, trust, have uh, a lot of resources to promote in local SEO. So any insights how to find the way to compete with uh, big brands? Yeah, so I think uh, one of the uh, easiest 
or the best ways to compete with the big brands, uh, the Yelps of the world, uh, the local directories, is uh, really what I look at is instead of trying to compete with them so much, uh, you want to create uh, more content. SEO at the end of the day is about content. So instead of trying to just go and um, say, I'm going to go and be the number one uh, plumber in New York City, um, try to be the number one plumber, not just for New York City, but every other borough, every other county, every uh, region that's around your metropolitan area. Um, and go with that approach as opposed to just trying to you know, outrank um, the directory sites. Because, I mean, there are going to be times when those directory sites are going to show up a lot in the search engines uh, for certain um, categories. But there's all kinds of um, little niche keywords and communities where the directories uh, may not show up as easily um, or may not show up as much and you can still capture that traffic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, uh, what do you think, uh, for example, you know, if you can only get one backlink from relevant website, but from different region or uh, from irrelevant website, but in your location, uh, what do you choose? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So backlinks, um, when it comes to local SEO, I think the more competitive the niche, uh, the more competitive your market, the more important um, links are. So if you're an attorney in your local area, uh, backlinks are going to be a strategy that comes into play. Uh, but if you're um, a more niche, um, or maybe there's just not as much competition for your uh, specific services, then I don't worry about backlinks as much. Um, mm -hmm. Now, with that to say, that to say, if you're a brand new business owner, uh, then you basically do want to have some links from some of these directory websites. But I would not go overboard and go out and build 200 links on a bunch of directory websites that nobody's ever heard of. I would just make sure that you're covered on the major ones that people know about, like Yelp and Bing and YelpPages.com maybe. Um, and Apple Maps would be another one because a lot of people are searching for you on um, Apple phones. Um, just the main ones that most people would use. Those are the ones that you want to make sure that you're listed on. And then in terms of getting uh, backlinks, um, if you're a local competitor, uh, getting links from um, some of your local organizations that are really well known um, in the community. Um, every city is going to be a little bit different. Um, getting regional uh, backlinks uh, definitely helps. Um, and then getting um, connected with other businesses that might be related to your niche. So if you're um, in pest control in the Richmond area, it might be beneficial for you to uh, get a link from a landscaping company in the Richmond area because pest control and landscaping might work together in terms of how the vegetation is um, around the home and how it helps with controlling uh, pest control issues around the home. Um, I will also say that when it comes to backlinks, uh, backlinks in a lot of ways is like a popularity contest. So, mm -hmm. you know, just like when you're in high school, everybody wants to be friends with the popular kids, right? Kind of look at it the same way when it comes to getting uh, backlinks. Um, you know, if, if you're getting a link request uh, for a website that's in your local area, uh, but you go on that site and um, it looks like they have one page and, you know, it looks like or hasn't been updated in 10 years, that's probably might not be somebody that you want to necessarily get a link from. Uh, but, you know, if, if it's somebody that everybody's heard of in your area and they're like the number one business in town that everybody knows who they are, then, yeah, getting a link from that website is going to be a lot more valuable to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk more about link building because uh, it's hard. <laughs> in SEO, yeah. it's, it's the most hardest part. But uh, I'm interested how to differentiate your link building from uh, competitors because, uh, you know, for example, uh, I think all competitors can uh, get citations on MOAS, on uh, SEMrush even provides the services. Uh, you can do it manually. But uh, how to differentiate yourself? How to find backlinks that competitors uh, can't? So any insights about that? Yeah, so... Um, I think um, as far as getting uh, backlinks, um, I would say if you're a new business, um, what happens is um, you will begin to attract 
uh, backlinks naturally. If you build a nice website and you build, uh, you know, build out with service pages. Um, so if, say you're a plumber, um, if you have um, information about plumbing, uh, if you have information about, um, you know, it could be um, uh, getting plumbing fixed with a toilet or the shower or kitchen faucets, you know, more niche uh, content um, on the website. Um, and it's built out well and you start to show up in the search engines, there's some of the directories are naturally going to link to you anyways. And I would say um, starting off uh, getting backlinks is not going to be quite as important. Um, however, um, there are tools like you mentioned SimRush where you can actually um, go and look at your competitors and then uh, look at your website. And SimRush will actually tell you uh, what um, pages, what websites, um, are linking to your competitors that don't link to yours. Um, and then uh, it's just a matter of looking at those competitor websites and seeing, um, you know, which one of these sites could I get a link from? Um, maybe it turns into a sponsorship opportunity where you can sponsor a golf tournament or a cornhole tournament. Um, and you're not talking about backlinks at all, but, uh, you know, just that other website putting a, uh, um, information about the sponsors and linking back to your website. Um, you know, you're getting a backlink um, from that site. Um, but now I often tell uh, consumers in a, a lot of niches, and I, I think this is where a lot of SEOs get hung up on backlinks, uh, is what I find the vast majority of the time is that the reason the websites are not ranking well on Google is not because they don't have enough backlinks. It's because either the um, content is not great uh, the website is um, not user friendly um, or the code is bloated or doesn't load uh, correctly. There's technical issues on the website. Um, or um, it could be that everything on the website looks awesome and fantastic. But then you go look at the review rating and, you know, they've got a 3.4 rating in an industry where everybody else has a 4.5. Um, so mm -hmm. that Google business profile can make a huge difference if you're, um, if you're not, if your reviews are lower than your competitors. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, agree. Uh, I'm interested about uh, content. Uh, content is the number one. It doesn't matter what kind of reviews or uh, backlinks you have. If you have no great content, you can't get results. And can you tell uh, how to create such content? Because uh, we can't measure it's uh, great content or not. Uh, it's estimation. I can feel that my content is the best, but my competitors can think the same, but Google will uh, choose, you know, their uh, complex algorithm can tell, okay, we want to rank this content, not this one. So, and uh, when you have huge competition uh, at any niche, it's hard. So can you tell how to create great, high quality, valuable content uh, with local intent? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so. As I stated before, um, SEO is primarily driven by content. So what you wanna do is, um, if you're gonna do it manually, uh, so you really wanna look at all the websites uh, that you're trying, uh, that you're gonna be competing with. So um, especially the top three organic service uh, listings. So let's say you're a plumber and uh, let's say you're in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're a plumber in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, and you're the copywriter or the SEO, and you're trying to figure out how do I create content? Uh, what you want to do is you want to look at the top three uh, results and you want to compare uh, what kind of content is um, being written there. Uh, so first thing I like to look at is the uh, word count, uh, especially on the homepage, uh, when you're comparing uh, the homepage for the different uh, plumbers that are in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and then after I look at the word count, I start to look at the um, the H1s, the H2s, the H3s. Um, and um, by looking at that, you can start to create a uh, content outline, a content brief uh, that's going to give you an idea of uh, what kind of content your website's going to need to have in order to compete with these other uh, companies. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next step in that is start to think about how can I make my content better than uh, the competitors that are already on page one. Um, again, um, the more competitive the industry, the um, the more time you're going to have to put into that. So um, 
you can look at things like um, your frequently asked questions, um, having a testimonial section, um, uh, looking at um, you know how much can you niche down the services. Uh, you can use a uh, tool like SimRush or um, Ahrefs, and you can um, get a feel for that industry and see um, you know what the top ranking keywords are and the top pages, and uh, get a really good feel just by examining all your competitors. Uh, what those service pages should be, um, what those keywords should be. Um, and then, of course, um, when talking about content briefs, um, there's also uh, Surfer SEO, uh, which you can use um, to audit existing content on the site if you're trying to decide why it's not uh, ranking. And Surfer SEO will give you some ideas about um, keyword density. Um, it'll show you um, how your content link compares to other uh, tools or to other websites. Um, and really, um, at the end of the day, uh, you want to think about every single um, aspect that might go into building that page that's going to um, help it kind of compete with your the other uh, main competitors, the top three, especially. And so when I say top three organic competitors, I always, I don't really regard the directories. Um, so like UpCity, Yelp, you know, any of those sites. Uh, competitors, mm -hmm. I'm talking about actual local competitors. Those are the three mm -hmm. that I really look at. And I'm talking about the organic listings. And then maybe the Google Maps listings, but especially the um, organic listings. And then the mm -hmm. last thing I will say about that is uh, definitely with AI here in 2023, chat GBT, um, you know, chat GBT now, I can build con content briefs. It can do help you with a lot of this manual labor where it might take a couple hours before that you might be able to do this a lot faster now. Yeah, yeah, I love this tool. But in the end, uh, I don't recommend to use this tool without, uh, uh, I mean, like, don't generate uh, content that uh, many others can do, but you can right. edit with this tool. <laughs> you know, right. I usually use this tool. For example, if I can construct uh, some thoughts, uh, the sentence. Uh, yeah, I can ask ChatGPT, please help me with that. I can edit my uh, content on ChatGPT, but I don't ask, please write me an article, write me the whole page, you know, because yeah, uh, right. many others will create totally the same. And yeah, um, uh, once I spoke with publication, I don't remember the name of this publication, that was PR campaign, and uh, this publication decided to stop accepting uh, all press releases because after launching ChatGPT, they got a lot of requests with generic answers, you know, so uh, they're not interested to, po to post that everyone uh, can do. So, um, yeah, and you mentioned about keyword density, testing. can you tell how it's important today because Google denies, uh, Google can deny a lot, but Google denies to uh, 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 number of words, uh, keyword, uh, destiny, many other parameters. Uh, but uh, I see uh, webmasters still pay attention to this metric to analyze what kind of content to create. And uh, of course, it's not a good idea to submit all these keywords for the sake of having them. But if we submit for a uh, human being, uh, and Google can scan and find all these keywords to understand what kind of uh, page uh, they have and uh, to rank it, rank it. Can you tell how it's important, this keyword destiny? Yeah. Um, so I used to be uh, just like uh, Google, and I used to feel that uh, keyword density was not a ranking factor. Uh, mm -hmm. But my stance has recently changed on that. And I think it's because I've started using Surfer SEO a lot. Um, in recent months. And I, I feel like now that uh, keyword density is not something that you should write for, at least not in the beginning. In the beginning, when you're first writing the content, you know, write your content. Um, maybe where you use chat GPT is to give you some direction on where to go with that content, but not to write the content, but maybe to help you with the content brief. Um, but then after you write the content, where I think keyword density can come into play is where you... Um, after you've written the content, it's already indexed, it's ranking, going back, you know, in three months, six months, uh, 12 months, um, however long it takes to mature, uh, depending on what the website is, and I won't get into that, but um, I would go back and begin to 
um, analyze the keyword density using a tool like Surfer SEO. Um, because at that point, it's a little things that can make a huge difference. Um, you know, it could be a difference between being like number t uh, three in the results versus being like eighth in the results. Um, mm -hmm. So I think keyword density is a good way to help you get across the finish line, but not to write your content. So don't, I wouldn't say like if you're writing for, uh, if you want to rank for SEO in Charlotte, North Carolina, you're going to go and, oh, make sure I say search engine optimization three times. No, I want to do that. What I would do is um, when you're trying to optimize your article after you've already written the content and you're comparing how can I make it better, use a tool like Surfer SEO or something um, similar to that to look at your keyword density. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Uh, I want to talk with, uh, about creativity. You know, ChatGPT can't help with creativity because uh, it's a great rewriting tool. <laughs> so you can rewrite everything online with ChatGPT, but in the end, nothing special. It's the same that we have today. We'll see in the future. I don't know. Probably this tool will develop and innovate. But once I spoke with data science in Zurich, uh, in big university, uh, and this team uh, spends time a lot to learn about AI. And uh, I got reply, you can't imagine how AI is stupid. <laughs> so yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a great tool. It can help. But uh, it's not creative, uh, at least today. Uh, but you know, uh, let me share a story uh, about one book. Uh, it's called Stone Maidens. It was published in November 2012. Uh, for uh, about 14 years, uh, Lloyd uh, Richards couldn't sell this book. He sold some copies, but he uh, couldn't get uh, great numbers. Uh, then his daughter decided to post a video on TikTok about this book. Uh, the video became viral uh, from account with zero followers, with zero promotion, but uh, video became viral uh, plus 50 million views. And today this book is the bestseller on Amazon. You know, <laughs> bestseller uh, for uh, 14 years. Uh, the author couldn't sell this book by using marketing, sales methods, and many other stuff. But one viral video changed everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I watched this video. I watched this video. Uh, I can't tell uh, it's uh, awesome design. Just simple design. But it's creative. It's creative. It's it, no. Uh, I after watching this video, I got uh, curiosity. Whoa, what kind of book is this? I, I want to read this book. You know? And uh, uh, I think many others got the same feeling. That's why it's a seller on Amazon. And I'm interested how to be creative in your content. ChatGPT can create, generate a lot of text. But it's not creative. And uh, can you tell uh, how to stand out from the rest? How to differentiate your content in local SEO and provide something new that customers can't find on other websites? Yeah. Um, so I think um, where you can get really creative is um, looking outside the box a little bit. Uh, so when you're trying to take it to that next level, um, you know, maybe look at the top competitors in the industry. Um, I can remember uh, many years ago when I first got into SEO, um, I did a lot of freelance uh, copywriting and um, what I would do is I would go on YouTube and um, I would, um, or I'd even go on webinars uh, sometimes if I was writing internet marketing uh, articles and um, I would hear uh, webinars about certain content and then I would just learn about that topic and then create content from, from that. Uh, so, you know, YouTube, they say is the number two search engine, right? Behind uh, Google. So there may be a lot of like video content that's out there that could be turned into um, written content. Um, then I would also look at uh, social media content. Now there's tools out there where we can go and um, look at uh, viral content for any industry through social media, uh, like Facebook and Instagram. And um, you know, think out of the box, uh, what are the uh, things that people respond to um, online that could be really uh, beneficial on an article that other people don't know um, or, uh, you know, uh, that is not being covered as much in SEO and you can begin to identify those gaps. Um, 
Also, we can use uh, Simbrush to, to to do a keyword gap analysis um, and just you know look at uh, what some of the other sites are doing that uh, maybe you're not doing. Um, I have noticed over the years that um, if I do a search for a certain keyword and I find a website that I've never heard of that's ranking really well, uh, sometimes it's because that website, even though they don't rank for something else or, or for most terms, they might rank for us. Uh, some specific uh, terms that because they've done some uh, really great uh, keyword research. Um, I found that even like with SimRush, it's a great tool, but a lot of times it doesn't have all the keywords, uh, for, especially when you get into really technical um, topics like some of the IT topics, um, technology, um, anything that's recent, definitely anything with chat, GPT, so that's pretty recent, uh, medical terminology. Um, look for those topics that maybe are not being covered in a tool like SimRush, um, you know, go into Google and just type in, um, start typing in keywords and uh, see what comes up in Google suggest tool. Uh, look at the people also ask questions. Um, if it shows up and people also ask, people are asking those questions. And, um, you know, Google, um, just by using Google itself, you can get a lot of, uh, uncover a lot of hidden hidden gems for what people are asking for that may not already be covered with your content. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned about these great tools, but uh, I see, you know, another cliche uh, when people, uh, if, for example, if you use SEMrush, most other tools, uh, I think your competitors can do the same. You know, they That's use right. the same tools. And I see when people uh, find keywords that thousand others can find in order to create their websites uh, and i found many uh, marketers uh, use a different approach they usually search on reddit on quora uh, in many other places uh, to, because today the era of lazy marketers is that you know when you use yeah. generic methods it doesn't work but uh, can you tell how to find keywords that your competitors can ignore and it's a good idea to optimize your website with zero volume keywords yeah so um i think one of the best ways to know some of the keywords and topics uh that your competitors are, are finding is to become an expert in that industry so um if you're going to be um come an expert in your industry, um, it may require you to spend a few extra hours in going through, um, you know, going through blog post. Um, I I'm just thinking about a personal injury lawyer that I've worked with um, here in my local area, and um, I would literally go um, through each blog post and just look for things that hadn't already been written about. And um, when I, I found this one uh, topic that I'd never written about for this personal injury lawyer's blog. Um, I wrote the blog post, and um, when I um, wrote it, um, it went viral after a while, and now it's getting hundreds of hits a month. And um, mm -hmm. I think part of the reason it's gone viral and it's getting hundreds of hits a month is because um, it's not always showing up in the keyword tools. So, um, you know, sometimes it's becoming a, um, a uh, yeah, becoming an expert in your niche, and then just mainly looking at your competitors for websites, um, you know, find uh, keywords that aren't being pulled up by any tool, um, find, you know, valuable content that's um, being maybe shared on uh, social media that, and then just check and see if that valuable content that's on social media, um, see if it's in uh, Google and see if, you know, what kind of content is out there. Cause it may be that um, it's not showing up in Ahrefs or uh, SimRush, um, and it's uh, untapped market because the average marketer is not going the extra mile, just like you said, uh, to really get to know uh, their market. And there's uh, some uncovered opportunities out there. You mentioned uh, Core and Reddit. Um, I found, too, that a lot of times, let's say you're in something that's really competitive, like uh, weight loss. Um, if you can find a topic on uh, weight loss um, that's ranking really well in Core, for instance, um, using a tool like SimRush or um, Ahrefs uh, to, um, you know, sort, look at uh, weight loss topics, or weight loss keywords that are in top 10 
Um, if they show up on Core and Reddit, that means that um, Google hasn't really been able to find a whole lot of great content for that specific keyword. And then you can create content for your website. Um, it's usually a lot easier to um, rank for keywords that are ranking on Core and Reddit and other popular uh, platforms in your industry um, than it is, um, you know, just trying to rank for any average keyword that you might find on SimRush or Ahrefs. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Uh, Kevin, let's talk about one thing that I usually get. I do myself all the time. I make a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot mistakes, you know, uh, and I keep doing them. Uh, so, uh, can you list mistakes that webmasters still do by optimizing with local SEO and your tips how to find a much better way? Um, yeah, so uh, you're asking about the common mistakes for uh, local SEO and yeah. Um, better. Yeah, so uh, I will say one of the most common mistakes that people make in local SEO um, is um, they believe, well, f a few things. Um, they uh, they try to work with somebody that's going to offer a whole lot of services for a really cheap uh, price. So in the United States, anyways, um, you might see somebody that's offering like a $200 a month SEO plan and they see, oh, we're going to list you on 70 different directories and you're going to get all these great backlinks. And, um, no, they just promise the world. Um, when really um, you know, getting a whole bunch of links from uh, directories that nobody's ever heard of is not going to be that valuable. So um, I'd say the number one mistake, one of the biggest mistakes I see uh, for sure would be uh, not spending enough, investing enough in marketing when you're, especially when you're first getting started. Uh, number two mistake I see is um, people not investing enough in their uh, website, in their web website presence. Um, I've lost track of the number of stories we've heard at our marketing agency over the years of, uh, you know, they, um, they want to work with another agency, but the agency doesn't want to let go of their hosting information or their analytics information and, um, we can't move the website over because, you know, another company is holding that company's information hostage. Um, so, you know, you want, you need to work. Number two is a mistake that I see people making is uh, people skimp out on um, working with people that they can trust. Um, so it's very, very important to work with somebody that you can trust. And a, a lot of times that means you need to work with somebody that's uh, local. Although you can find people on, um, the freelancing sites like Upwork and um, Fiverr and you know all the other freelancing sites that are out there. However, um, you really want to make sure that you can trust those providers before you begin working with them. And think about the worst case scenarios. Um, I've um, spoken with two people this year where um, just in the last two months where um, somebody um, had to fire a disgruntled employee and that disgruntled employee had control of the Google business profile. And so they took control of the listing after they left the company and delete the owners and everybody else from the profile. And then they delete all the information. And next thing you know, the customers, the client's phone stops ringing because a disgruntled employee basically uh, removed their listing, marked them as closed on Google. Um, so um, working with people you can trust in 2023 is uh, very, very, very important. Um, when you're working with somebody um, that doesn't have as much uh, liability, if they want to, um, you know, take your stuff, steal your content, or just, you know, come at you if, if you don't provide, you know, if they don't like you for whatever reason, um, you know, you, get, you, get, you need to really think about um, working with people that you can trust. So that would be the second thing. And then the third thing I would be say is the uh, biggest issue I see all the time with um, local uh, websites um, is that people want to work with the um, Wix and they want to work with Squarespace because if you do a search for web design in uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, the first thing you're probably going to see is you're probably going to see uh, $199 websites. And unfortunately, <laughs> um, a lot of these um, companies have uh, turned web design into something this perception that you can build a website for $100 and $200. Can you build a website for that cheap? Uh, yeah, sure you can. But the reality is, 
if you're going to build a website that's actually going to drive leads to your company and actually uh, get results for you, um, then um, you really need to invest a little bit more in your business. Yeah, you remind me of my friend, uh, you know, he asked me uh, how much it cost uh, to build a website. I told him, I don't know. I don't know really. It depends, but uh, it depends on what kind of content you need. Uh, but uh, I don't recommend to do something cheaper than ten thousand dollars, you know, because even simple website needs a professional team who can create this content uh, structure. And uh, after some time, he replied to me, "You know, I found people who can do it for three hundred dollars." So good luck, good luck. Yeah. Yep. It's the same like to find link builders who can do it for uh, five ten dollars on Fiverr or uh, write uh, text for five ten dollars. Uh, by the way, today you don't need even to hire these people. You can do it on ChatGPT, you know, <laughs> to get it for free. All yep. these uh, texts. Uh, and today, what I like on this tool that this tool can kill this cheap services uh, writing because nothing special. Uh, and if you need to get a hundred percent unique article, I don't know for the sake to have this or any other purpose, you can do it on chat GPT <laughs> to get this article. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I have the question about experience. I have some students in my network who are looking for ways how to learn from scratch how to go ahead on this direction. Uh, let's imagine you started from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills. What would you do today to learn more about local SEO? That's a great question. Um, so I would not do what I did many years ago, which is to go on internet marketing forums and just uh, listen and start to believe a lot of the things that uh, they talk about on uh, internet marketing forums. Because yeah, so what will happen is you'll get sold a whole lot of courses um, that may or may not be true. And you don't know because you don't have the knowledge base. Um, so I would recommend going on uh, some of the um, largest, um, most popular um, internet marketing uh, professionals today and start with free courses. Um, you know, everybody, most people in the marketing space know Neil Patel. Uh, so, you know, Neil Patel would be somebody that, I'm pretty sure he has a free marketing course. Um, Boss.com, uh, they have a free marketing um, course that you can take. Um, Backlinko, um, uh, it's in Backlinko.com used to be owned by Brian Dean. Um, and you can learn a lot of SEO from uh, him. And um, what I would do is um, no, just get in the game. Um, start with uh, copywriting, freelance copywriting. Um, you can easily set up an account on like Fiverr or uh, or Upwork and just you know learn, start to write content, learn how SEO works uh, a little bit at a time. There's so much to learn when it comes to SEO. Um, if you just decide, oh, I'm going to sit down this weekend and learn SEO, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and a lot of it is just getting your, your hands dirty and, and diving into it. Um, and then once you have some experience. Um, taking courses. Um, now, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time taking courses, but you know, you could go to uh, sites like udemy.com and um, get you know, for $10, um, get some information on SEO, how to get started, uh, learn how to build websites, um, because um, learn, learn about WordPress. Um, most local business websites are going to be on WordPress. Um, and if you have uh, WordPress guilds, um, you know, that's going to take you a long ways toward working uh, with a lot of different uh, types of uh, businesses and websites. And then um, another thing I would definitely recommend is um, after you have a little bit of experience, even if you say, hey, I want to be that person that can work from anywhere in the world, um, that's great. But go work for an agency for a while. Go work at an agency for two to five years. Um, I've been an SEO for uh, 10 years before I started working at my uh, current agency, Keyweb Concepts. And um, I've learned all kinds of skills from uh, just working with the designers and the copywriters at our agency. Things that you would never learn if you're just sitting at home behind a computer um, reading SEO blogs all day. 
Uh, there's no there's no substitute to that. Um, you know, go and um, work with the agency after you have a little bit of experience. Because if you have some ex a little bit of experience, even just doing some uh, freelancing for copywriting and uh, WordPress and you know, getting your your feet wet, um, you know, there's agencies out there that will bring you on board and um, help you learn the ropes and help you learn everything you really need to know to be successful with SEO. Nice, nice. Yeah, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, I spoke with Neil Patton on this podcast and he told me uh, that you mentioned uh, you need to uh, practice more. You know? So, yeah. yeah, you can learn from courses, you can go to a demi, you can open a new portal, backlink course, you can take my course. Uh, but, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of course you have, it's more important to practice. You can learn everything. But overlearning doesn't bring results, any results. You need to uh, practice. It's like, I don't know, if I, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo prefers to hit a ball a thousand times a day than uh, to read a few books how to play soccer because it's more practice. Yeah. It's the same with ACO. You need to yep. take your hands and do ACO. So you can start your website. You can uh, go to freelance, uh, start from the cheapest services ever you know i did it i remember uh even i had another company that uh, gave me good money but i decided to learn more about the ceo so uh, uh the best thing what uh, i could do just to provide the services almost for free you know my first payment was like 200 dollars uh, yeah. not bad you know so yeah. uh it's good money to get experience you know you can't sell uh i mean like to charge a big price without experience of course you need to get this experience sometimes you can help for free to get this experience that's normal as well so yeah i agree kevin and my final question about the future can you predict forecast what kind of future will be in local SEO because we can see this chat GPT on Bing, on Google, even Snapchat, DuckDuckGo, Baidu, almost all search engines, social media platforms as well uh, implement uh, such chat and probably SEO will be changed. What do you think about that? Oh man, that's a huge question. We could have all podcasts just on that one. Um, yeah. So I would say, um, from I'm been trying to figure that out myself, even because um, I'm I understand that ChatGPT, um, you know, regardless of if you like it or you're against it, um, you know, it's here. AI is here, uh, so I I think we're it's gonna be hard to predict where we're gonna be at in five years from now. However, I will say this, um, you know, they said way back in the day when television came out, they said that radio. You know would be uh would disappear and you know radio um still around in some form today uh you know when um when the internet came out um they said that uh you know, newspapers should be gone and all physical media would be gone but um there's still people that read magazines there's still people that um <laughs> use print media um and i think seo will always be something that's going to be used even if it's just something five years from now where google um is used mostly by the older population. Um, I think it's going to become more and more uh, valuable as a skill if you're an SEO to learn how to not just optimize on Google, but optimize on other uh, search engines. Um, now, when I say search engines, I'm not talking about being in uh, DuckDuckGo. What I'm talking about is the younger audience. Um, they're using um, TikTok or Instagram to do searches. So. Uh, begin to learn the algorithms of uh, TikTok or uh, Instagram or even Amazon if you're selling products and begin to learn how to optimize on these other platforms. Um, and then I would also say um, don't ignore chat GPT or AI. Um, uh, I think people that can understand how to utilize a tool like that to optimize their productivity are going to be extremely valuable in the future. Um, and I think you know, we'll have to see where things go as far as AI is concerned. Um, but I definitely think even if, you know, five years from now, um, people are using AI more for doing some of the simple searches, 
Uh, there's always going to be people that need to do research on uh, various topics, and they're still going to get a Google to find that information. They're not just going to take it from AI. Uh, they're going to take it from multiple sources. And, you know, AI gets their content from uh, Google. <laughs> right now, I think that's from Google and Bing and other places. So um, I do think SEO is going to be a lot different in five years. And a lot of that's going to be influenced with how AI uh, is utilized, um, you know, today on the Internet. But, you know, two or three years from now, AI may be on our phones helping us with things, too. And um, I do think that SEO it's going to be uh, a lot different as time goes on. Uh, Google could be adding more ads or we're pushing the organic traffic further down the uh, page. Uh, but um, yeah, in answer to your question, I would say um, understanding um, how to use um, AI to um, improve productivity, um, understanding how to optimize not just for Google, but for um, Instagram and TikTok um, and Facebook and whatever the platform is in the future that hasn't been invented yet. Um, if you can learn how to utilize whatever the popular platform is, where your audience is, wherever your audience is. If your audience is on Reddit, then you want to understand how to uh, optimize on Reddit. Uh, if your audience is on Core, you want to understand how to optimize on Core. And um, if you do those things, you know we don't need to worry about um, you know what happens in the future with uh, SEO or um, AI, just go where your audience is and provide um, great content. And if you do that, you'll have customers. Yeah, a great point. A great point. I love it. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter what kind of future will be. You need to adapt. And we did it before. <laughs> we will yeah. do it forever because the era of lazy marketers is dead. So we need to uh if you have experience today in seo you can adapt to any channel because is seo is not you know i think people think seo is uh how to rank websites on google it's not it's more about how to create high quality content high quality yeah. content works everywhere uh it's uh, link building is not to uh, get this authority for google it's more to create a brand awareness to get mm -hmm. traffic from these backlinks. So mm -hmm. if you can't get traffic on backlinks, it doesn't mean that these backlinks will work for you. So you need to get backlinks that people click. So, uh, and uh, SEO will be there, of course, but uh, because nothing is uh, forever. No, uh, it's inevitable. I remember when Jeff Bezos said that Amazon will be bankrupt because uh, any company, any methods will be there. But it doesn't matter. You can adapt to new challenges to by using experience that you have in SEO to create high quality content, to think more about customers. Even today, you don't need to care about search changes. You need to care about human being. If you care about them, then uh, search engines will fit them more with your content. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Kevin, it's a big pleasure to get in my show, to learn from you. Tell our audience the best way, how to learn more about you, how to follow you, how to reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so the best way to reach out to me, um, you can go uh, through our website, uh, keywebconcepts.com. Um, it's a website, um, or that's an agency um, that I work for. Um, you can also uh, reach out to me through LinkedIn. Um, if you want to, uh, feel free to add me as a connection. Um, and love to talk to you about how we can help you optimize your local website for um, SEO. Nice, nice, guys. You can uh, find all these links in the description below. Listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time. A big pleasure. Love it. So valuable insights. I'm going to follow you. Uh, I sent you connection request on LinkedIn. So, uh, guys, I recommend to anyone to reach out to Kevin to tell that you got value on this podcast and uh, follow on social media, open website, uh, because you can see a lot of valuable insight. Okay, guys, love you. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye.